Good morning, good morning, and thank you so much for tuning in to Speak the Word broadcast this morning. I am your host, Prophetess Jacqueline Price. As always, I am elated to be with you this morning to share the good news of Jesus, you guys, to let you know Father loves you, He's fighting for you, you can count on Abba. He has this amazing plan for your life, and you just got to trust him. You've got to trust him that the plans that he's thinking toward you, the thoughts that he's thinking toward you, he knows and it's going to be well. It's going to be well. I love you guys so much. And again, I want to thank you for tuning in this morning because Father always had something he wants to say. He has always had something he wants to share so that you can be enriched, so that you can be encouraged so that you can know without a shadow of a doubt that you can make it. Amen. You can make it. You're like, I, 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 I don't ever see how I'm going to make it sometimes, prophetess, because things are oppressing hard against me. Things are oppressing hard. So sometimes I don't see how I'm going to make it. But you've got to know I can make it. You've got to know I can make it. No matter where my life may take me, I can make it. Why? Because Abba loves you. And today, I want to be talking to you. Good morning, everyone that's coming on. And, and while you're coming in, do me a favor. Do some tagging. Do some sharing. Let someone know that the broadcast is on the air so that they too can be enriched and encouraged by it this morning. But today I want to talk to you about not quitting. Don't quit. I've taught this, uh, touched on this once before. I might have taught it once before. But it was so in my spirit. These I've been meditating on this yesterday and, to, and, and today. Don't quit. Don't quit. Now is not the time to say, I quit. No. Now is not the time to say, I give up. No. Don't quit. It's easy to quit. It's just, I'm not doing it anymore. It's easy to quit. But why? Don't quit. I'm going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And I'm also going to be in Galatians too. But to know that in this day and age, it's easy for people to say, I'm done. There's no fight. There's no tenacity. There's no pressing in. I saw a, a friend that we know, uh, I, actually someone we grew up with, posting something on Facebook. And what she posted, her name is Angela, uh, what she posted was about consistency. Her name is Angela Gatlin, but what she posted was about consistency. Consistency is what we need in this hour. We need to be consistent. I am. I can tell you, you guys, yes, I can raise my hand and say, I am guilty of not being consistent in some areas in my life. I, I can raise my hand and say, yes, I'm guilty of not being consistent in some things that I know I need to be consistent in. But don't quit. Don't quit. I'm not, uh, you might be saying, I'm not consistent in this area, or, or, or I'm, I'm lax or slack in this area, or I can be lazy in this area. When, you th when I think about doing, when I think about exercising, okay, yeah, I, I can get a little lazy on that one. When I think about going walking, oh my God, I got to go walking. But we never forget, we, we miss it when we don't recognize if I maintain and I, if I don't quit, I am going to see results. Then he wants you to quit so you won't see results. He wants you to give up so you won't see the results. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and verse number, uh, verse number 24. Because this is Paul talking. And Paul was a man who had many opportunities to say, I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. But look what he says here. He says in the 24th verse of the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, 
but one receives the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Run that you may obtain. Let me read it from the Amplified Version. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete? But only one receives the prize, so run your race, that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Oh, that's rich all day. That's the rich all day. Don't quit. Why? You're going to obtain if you maintain. <laughs> You're going to obtain if you maintain your consistency. Mm. You're going to obtain if you run and not look at Oh, how many miles you say I got to go now? How many more I, uh, I, I got to walk? What? No, what is the objective? What is the goal? The goal, the objective is the prize. The goal and objective is the prize. Wow. Wow. And I want to talk to you. I want to share something with you because I think this is so, it's so good because like I said, I've been meditating on this and I started laughing because I began to think about what my nephew said. My nephew now, he'll be, what, 17, 17 soon, I think. Uh, yeah, 17 in March of next year. He'll be 17. And I was thinking about what he said when he was younger. I called and talked to my sister and this was during the winter months. And here in Texas, we'd had... Uh, we had snow and so ice was on the road and it was a and I think it was a Saturday I was talking to her and we had to cancel Sunday service because the roads were bad so the people couldn't we didn't want the people pastor didn't want the people driving on those roads this was some years ago and he happened to hear the conversation about us not having service and I never forgot the statement because I made a t-shirt on it and he said, hey, Jackie, how are you going to quit on God like that? I heard it. See, you got to catch things. And I heard that not only in the natural, but I heard that in the spiritual thing, too, a sense, too. How are you going to quit on God like that? That's why... And I began to explain to him, I said, no, Cameo, I call him Cameo, I'm not, we're not quitting on God, we can't have service because the weather is bad. After explaining it a little bit more, he and my sister, he said, oh, okay, all his concern was, you're quitting on God? You're, all he heard was, you're, he was thinking, you're quitting on God? How are you going to do that? And I'm here to say the same thing to you, to those that will listen later on. How are you going to do that? How are you going to quit on Abba? Not being consistent, not maintaining, not persevering. Paul says, in order for you to get this prize, you got to run the race. In order for you to obtain that that you've been believing for, you cannot say, I'm done, I'm throwing in the towel. You, I can't do it. I was jotting down some things. I'm going to go to my computer right now because I was going to put this out on Facebook. But I want to say this live. I, I put this down and I was just jotting down some things I want to say. And one thing I said, I said, I want to encourage you to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Life may, br life may bring many encounters, obstacles, and uncertainties, but raise your head up and look up. Then I said, put down the towel. Wow. <laughs> put down the towel. Don't throw in that towel. Mm, why? Because we never lose. Now is not the time, people of God, to say, I quit. Now is not the time, people of God, to say, I'm done. Why? You're after obtaining. What I'm seeing is this. People have, they've used the pandemic, we talked about this once, once before, to make excuses for throwing in the towel. They've used the pandemic to make excuses why I don't go to church, why I'm, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. They're, they're using these excuses and reasons for not completing the race. 
not completing the race. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to keep reading to this. I'm going to get to this. Going down to that 25th verse. This is Paul. I just love this. He's talking and he tells us, he says, and every man, let me go to the amp Amplified. He says, now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win. They do it to win. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither, but we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Paul is talking about it in his day. These athletes are doing everything they can to win. I told you about my brother. He's a bodybuilder. He, he, he's a personal trainer. The man's good at what he does, but when he would make when he was in competition back in the day, he was he was so consistent, he was so driven. Why? Because he was after the prize. He was after the prize. He didn't quit, even though his body was saying, "You, oh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted." No, his whole goal and purpose was to sculpture that body. So when it came time for him to be out there with all the other men to be on display, he had conditioned that body, used the proper weight, sculptured that body, and he looked good for the competition. He talked about how he would drink water and, and what the water did and how it, it he. It was just beautiful how he talked about what he did to sculpture that body so that they could see the abs, so that they could see the calves and, and the triceps and everything they needed to see in the competition because the judges were looking for something specific. And he won the competitions that he, he went into. He came in first place and he came in second place, but he won those competitions. Why? Because he was driven. He didn't quit. Why are you so easily willing to quit? This is not the time. Let me show you something else Paul is saying. He said their whole objective is to win a wreath. You know, back in the day, because that was the prize for them. Now it's different. You can win money. You can do this. You can do the other. But look what he says. But what is our objective? To receive a crown. Objective. We're in this for the crown, baby. Not only for the crown, but we're in it for the main thing is to be with Jesus. The main thing is to be with Father. To be with the Holy Spirit. The main thing is to be with our Father. So, things come your way. People irritate you. Your husband getting on your nerve. Your children getting on your nerves. Life. I just read it. Obstacle, obstacles come. Hindrances come. But you don't quit. We're living in a society now who trains our children. Did you hear what I said? Who train our children to quit. Wait a minute, somebody said, well, no, they don't be trying to quit. When everybody has, a, here, you get a reward. You, we're, we're not trained to endure. We're not teaching our children how to endure in spite of the pitfall, in spite of the obstacle. We're not teaching them how to press on. And so much so now it's in the now it's in the arena of the corporate a corporate arena where okay they hurt my feelings they did this where nobody has the stamina to persevere and that's what needs to happen in this life we need to maintain our spiritual stamina but no we're Looking for reasons why I want to get out of this. Why I want to quit this. Why I want to quit that. Instead of persevering. We should be encouraging one another. Come on, brother. You need to come back to church. Come on, sister. I, I, I understand you, 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 you're, you're concerned about COVID. If you're concerned, put the mask on. Come on. You need to be in. Not. A, you need to be in church. You need to be in the seat. 
Why? Because you need this. Come on. We need to be encouraging them. And I know there are people who are encouraging them and saying the things, but there has got to be a maintaining of consistency in the body of Christ. Let me read this further on, and then I'm going to go to another verse. But look at this. In a different book. Look what else he says in that 26th verse. Therefore, what? I do not run uncertainly without defined aim. Ooh, come on, talk, Paul. I do not box like one beating the air and uh, striking without an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body. What, I got to do some st things. I got to do some things to maintain. I got to do some things to be consistent. I got to get back in my prayer time and in my, my fasting so I won't quit. I can't quit. You may have done something that just may have blow was a blow to you, but no, you got to say, uh -uh, none of these things shall move me. I got to be consistent. I got to maintain. I cannot afford to let go. Let go. Evangelist Catrice was, we were talking one day, and she said to me, um, after and I met one of our mentoring sessions, and she said, well, I guess I'll just tie a knot and hold on. Yes, ma'am. If you have to have a whole row of knots, don't quit. That's what we have to remember. If I have a whole row of knots, I'm not going to quit. Why? Because those knots are the grip that I need to say, you can make it, girl. You're going to have this thing, man. Don't give up. But in life, many times we're looking for reasons to untangle the knot and find an excuse to unravel the knot so that we can say, see, I told you it wasn't going to work. No, mm -mm. What did Paul say? I'm going to do some things. I'm going to have to take some things. I'm going to have to accept. I'm going to buffet my own body. I'm going to make sure that I'm in line. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the necessary thing. Why? Because if I discipline myself and not quit, I'm going to see the crown. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we allow people to be our biggest Deter, well, not no, not determined. Our biggest adversaries, so to speak. We allow people. Why? Why? Why do I say that? Because if we look beyond the people and see, it's not the people; it's him that's working through the people, behind the people, around the people, trying to deter you from getting to the crown. But you got to stop saying, you know. I, I, you got to stop blaming. I blame you. I blame you. I blame you. And then sometimes you blaming you. Why don't you just say, you know what? This is about my consistency. This is about my persistence. This is about me not quitting. I will not quit. See, because when you quit, the devil says, see, I knew, I knew you didn't have it in you. So, see, he's telling that the father, the Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren. So he's accusing you, the father. They ain't got it. They don't have no stamina. They ain't got this. You know, they can't, they can't take nothing. They can't take this. Why don't you go on and let me do this? Remember Job? He was constantly bombarding Job with things to affect him physically, to mess with his mental, his mental state. But Job yet and still, it wasn't about the mental state. It wasn't about the physical. It was about the determination in his spirit. Spirit man, I'm not going to curse God and die. I don't care what y'all want. You want me gone? I'm not leaving. That's the time. You know why? Because that is saying to Satan, I don't care what you try to do. Because why did you say prophet is the mental state? Because people right now are dealing with mental challenges. But if you recognize you have a spirit living on the inside of you. And you feed that spirit, no matter what the enemy may be trying to do to attack you in the mental, that spirit man can rise up and say, none of these things shall move me. Why? Because I have soundness of mind, and you call it forth. I've given you a sound mind, the Bible says. You call it forth. In spite of what the enemy might be trying to do to rob you of your soundness, you got to rise up and say, hold up, I walk in sound mind. 
I see what you're trying to do. Do you not see? Well, let's look at Job for a moment before I shift to the next book. Let's look at Job. He agonized over the fact, first of all, he, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get this. What's, why is this happening to me? I'm an upright man. I'm an upright man. See, some of us like, well, God, I don't understand what is happening to me. You know, I pay my tithes. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Sometimes, Father says, I'm saying to the enemy, they can take it. It's going to be, they trust me enough to know that I will never leave them nor forsake them. Come on. They trust me enough to know that I will always fight for them. So I understand what you're putting, putting on them, thinking that they're going to throw in the towel, thinking that they're going to quit. Oh, mine, they're not going to quit. Mine, my people, they that are called by my name, the ones that I've branded, the ones that I've marked and sealed by the Holy Spirit saying they belong to me. Jesus said, no, no. Yeah, I see what you're putting on them. But what you don't know, that thing that you're putting on them, Satan, I'm going to make it work for their good because all things work for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. So don't quit. This is what Paul is saying. I'm going to do what is necessary. I got to buffet my body. I'm going to have to fight to do it. I'm going to have to endure. Come on. I'm going to have to cons be consistent in the matter. I told you a moment ago, yes, I am guilty of, some, sometimes you have to own yourself. I am guilty of not being consistent when it's time for me to do my walking, my workouts, all that kind of stuff. But what I do, and that's why I got to maintain consistency. I got to, come on, girl. I'll be telling myself, girl, get up out of bed. Come on, come on. And I'm like, this is an easy walk. This walk is not hard. This walk is not hard, but then when I take start taking that this little hill in my community, when I go taking that steep area, oh boy, I said you need this. I I don't say, oh Lord, I don't feel like walking up that. I said, oh, this is what you need because you want to build your calf muscles up. You want to build your those leg muscles up. You need this, girl. Come on, you need this. You need this, and I'm huffing and I'm I'm puffing and I'm oh, oh what your lungs, girl. You got to get used to this. Come on, you building up your uh, your stamina. Come on, you got to get used to this, girl. I'm talking to myself as I'm also listening to the word of God in my ear. But I'm talking to myself to say, keep doing it. That's what we got to do. This is what Paul is talking to, about. Because the prize, what's the prize for me? What's my prize? My prize is I have a certain amount of weight I want to lose. That's my prize for me. What's your prize for you? Our prize in the spirit is to get the crown. To hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come on up a little higher. Come hang with me for a while. Come on until I do this and do that. That's the prize. What are you thinking about quitting on? Is it marriage? Is it uh I'm, I'm through dealing with these children. I, I, I've invested too much. Is it is it life itself? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting because I don't seem like I'm getting ahead. Now is not the time to quit. Now let me go to Galatians. Come on. Now is not the time to quit. Galatians 6 and 9. Now is not the time to say, I give up. Mm -mm, no time. No time. Galatians 6, verse number 9. Look what it says. It says, mm, mm, mm. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't get weary. Now is not the time. I told you about my nephew, right? How are you going to quit on God like that? Oh, my. Faith, trust, hope. Faith, trust, hope. Let it resonate in your soul. I got to activate my faith. I got to keep my hope. And I got to trust him no matter what. 
Because I'm not going to quit. Make the devil mad, y'all. Instead of making each other mad, make the devil mad. If you're, let me talk to couples for a minute. In your marriage and you've been having some disagreements, look, stop arguing with each other and start look, let's, let's look at each other and say, you know what? We're going to make the devil mad. We see what he's trying to do. We see he does not want this to happen. We see, Let's make him mad. Let's stop arguing with each other. Let's make him mad. Come on. Make him mad. He don't want you married. Ma okay, make the devil mad. I'm, we're going to make the devil mad. We, I'm going to stick with my, my children are going to be what father called them to be. They're going to be what father ordained them to be. I'm going to make you mad. Say, I'm not going to give up on my children. I'm going to keep standing and believing what God said he will do and is doing in their lives. I'm going to make him mad. I'm going to make the devil mad. I'm going to be consistent in my walk with Abba. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to put on God. I'm not finna quit on God. I'm not finna quit on God. I am not going to quit on God. Make the devil mad. You may be dealing with something in your physical body that's it's 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 seem like I I, I think I'm when I think I'm ahead I'm I, I'm two steps back. Uh uh, I'm not gonna quit. I don't, come on, talk to yourself. I don't like eating that particular food, no way, but I know they say I got to eat it. It's bland. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But, come on, if it's for your good. See, that's what the word of the Lord, that's why people don't like to eat the word. I, I don't get anything out of it. Come on. That's that statement of it's bland to them. Y'all better hear me. I, I really don't receive anything. It's like I can't understand it. That's the enemy wants you to not eat this food because he wants you to think that the, the spiritual food is bland. It's not tasty. It don't feel good to my taste buds. But, oh, come on, no. You got to recreate that taste buds. You got to let Father behold, I want to do a new thing in you. Hallelujah. You got to, come on, change the way you eat the taste, eat the word. Come on. How do I change the way I eat the word, Prophet? It's because I got to look at the word differently. I got to look at the word as it's my meat. It's my daily bread. It's my sustainer. It strengthens me spiritually and it strengthens me mentally. Why? Because it's my daily bread. I got to eat it. I got to eat it. Hallelujah. Some say, you know, oh, I, I, I want to change my diet. Let me go back to my brother for a moment. As a bodybuilder, as a, most, let me specifically, as a trainer, he is, I mean, the man is good, you guys. He's great at creating these menus, these menus that people need in order to eat. Specific things, and it all depends on what you're working on. That's what I love about him because my brother will he ask the question, okay, now what is your goal? What is your goal? What are you wanting to do? What is the goal? I never forget it. I never forget it. Um, uh, I was I had I did a retreat, and uh, some years ago, and when I did that retreat, I needed to lose weight to fit into my sister's wedding dress. And I told my brother, I said, look, I need to lose 10 pounds for this retreat because I got to fit into this wedding dress. And my brother gave me that menu. Huh? I followed that thing. And I, I slacked up one day, one day. So I didn't lose 10, I, lose, I lost nine. But I was able to fit in that wedding dress. Why? Because he gave me the plan. But see, I was giving you this book right here. You, you got the plan. You got the meal plan. Thank you. That's what they're called. They call a meal plan. He gives you the meal plan. Father gives you the meal plan. Say, eat this. I know when my brother gave me my meal plan. Oh, that's, ooh, come on, brother. Eat tuna. Okay, tuna was part of my thing. Eat tuna, eat green beans, and and eat you some uh, brown rice. Okay, stuff. I love tuna. I love tuna. Tuna? Okay, wait a minute. Hold up. But, but I can't put nothing in the tuna? No. 
And see, why? Because we're when God tells us to do something for our spirit man and, and, and do this and eat this, this is your meal plan. Wait, what do we go to God when it comes down to our meal plan? I can't do that no more, God. No, you can't fornicate no more. That's not a part of the meal plan. I can't have a husband's uh, her husband no more. No. Why? Let me read it to you. Let me go back to uh, Corinthians. I'm going to tell you why. Come on. I'm going to tell you why. No, you can't have it. No, you can't do it. The Bible says, we're working on something. The 27th verse says, but like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it in rough discipline. It by hardship and subdue it for a fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved, and be rejected as a counterfeit. When I lay aside, and I'm going to go to that scripture, why am I, I got to lay aside every weight and the sin, first of all, that so easily besets me, and run this race with patience. I got to buffet my body. Why? Because I'm, in, I'm being re-sculptured in my spirit to be who he's called me to be. I want to be just like him, so I'm getting back to the image of God. So no, I can't cheat. No, I can't have somebody else's spouse. No, I can't do this. No, it's about what? Sculpturing me to be just like him. I can't quit because of what my flesh wants. I can't quit because my flesh wants this, that, or the other. I got to adjust my attitude because I can't be mean to nobody. I can't make them feel hurt or pain because I'm feeling hurt and pain. I can't do that. Why? That's not a part of my meal plan. That's not my meal plan. So when he, my going back to my brother, when he, was, he told me what to do, he said, now do this. And I, I was living in uh, the Lancaster area of Texas. And he said, I said, I, I do go to the gym. He said, when you go to the gym, do this. He gave me specifics to do. I want you to do this. He wasn't with me, but he gave me instructions. Did you get that part? I said, what? He wasn't with me, but he gave me the instructions. Mm. He wasn't with me, but he gave me the instructions. The Bible says, how can you say that you love me and you hate your brother, that you... You know, you you don't see me, but you hate your brother. You see him every day. See, church, how can we say that we love God and we despise and we hate those that are around us, our brothers and sisters in the body? How can we do that? How can we do that? We can't. How can we be prejudiced? How can we be prejudiced and we say that we love Jesus? Mm? How can we despise others and we say we love Jesus? How can we be prejudiced in the body of Christ and say we love Jesus? We haven't seen God, but he said, how can you say you love me and you hate your brother? You see every day in the body. Well, I'm talking about the body now. See, there's so much that we have to do in the kingdom while we, we're so busy focusing on other things. We're, whether we know it or not, we're quitting in some areas. We're, we're quitting in some areas. Even though my brother didn't see me, but he gave me the instructions, this is what I want you to do. Lift, I want you to give me 20 reps over here. I want you to give me, lift that these many weights over here, light weights, because you don't want no, you don't want to be heavy, so get the 10 pound weights and lift them, and get the 5 pound weights and lift them. Father has given us the meal plan. He's given us instructions how to get our spiritual lives together, and what are we doing? Looking for a way out. See, I'm, on, I'm, I'm telling you what I did in the natural back then to get those. Not, I wanted 10, but I ended up getting 9 pounds off of me. 
for a reason. Something my husband said to me, which is absolutely true, and I'm about to let you guys go. He said, you know what you do? He said, you're good at it. He said, when you're determined to do something, you do it. He told me, he said, when you're determined to lose weight, you do it. But if you do it only when it's for a specific thing that you do. He's telling the truth. I will get where I want to go. Well, oh, got it. Mm. Where's my ice cream? Okay, what a cake in them. I, I made my, get my gold. I'm ready to go back to eat. But no. But I changed my mind. This year. This year. I changed my mind. This year, and I was talking to one of my sisters. I said, I made up in my mind that it's not going to be about goals for me anymore. It's going to be about lifestyle for me. It's going to be about lifestyle. No longer will I just go after a, a specific thing regarding my losing weight anymore. It's going to be a lifestyle for me. And I've been doing good. I got to get back out there and walk. Even though I walk inside or I do some exercises inside. I did that yesterday. But the point I'm making is it's about I'm not going to quit. I've done that before. I've done that before. I made up in my mind. I am not quitting. I may, you may wake up in the morning and not feel like prayer. Father's not beating you up because you woke up in the morning and didn't feel like having prayer time. But you can't keep doing that though. You know? Because you're going to have to, what? Go back to the meal plan. You got to, the meal plan is, okay, if you want a spiritual meal plan, here it is. Meal plan is, in the morning when you get up, pray. Reach your word. My brother, in the morning, he said, when you get up, this is what I want you to do. Drink some water. Drink water. Yes, because you're going to flush out your system. You're drinking water because that's going to flush out your system from what you last night you laid down, you slept, so you're drinking the water to flush you out. And then when you do this, if you're working out, work out, then go and eat this. He gave specific things in order for me to reach my goal. Father has given you this word, specific things to reach the crown that you're working for. We want eternal life. We want eternal life. We will have eternal life if we follow this meal plan. We will see results in our personal lives. We will see results in our family's lives. Why? Because I'm not going to beat you up, family member, because you may not, what, follow the meal plan the way I follow the meal plan, but am I eating it? And we're going to eat the meal plan. Some, you can't get mad at somebody. And they said, you know, I'm following this word. I'm doing this word. And you get mad at your brother. You get mad at your sister and say, hey, wait a minute. They not doing it the right way. They not doing it like I was doing it. Then why they ain't doing it like this? See, we, we get too caught up. Let me tell you. I was, so when my brother, and I'll be complete. Kind of talking about the men. Oh, I gotta do that. Uh, I, oh, I really like mayo in my in my tuna. He would adjust the meal plan for me and said, "Okay, would well, you like tuna mayo in your tuna? Get just a little bit." Mmm. Uh, okay, okay, I can do that. But the thing he told me was this: in order to see it, you're gonna have to do it. In order to go where our Father's taking me, because I'm feeling the Holy Spirit now in my soul. In order for you to go where Abba's taking you, you're going to have to do it. See, we want to bypass this word. We want to bypass our spiritual meal plan and think we're going to get results by doing it our way. You're not, you've got to follow, follow me. Follow me. The word of the Lord says, follow me. Paul put it this way. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me. I will not leave you comfortless. That's what Jesus told the disciples. Follow me. 
the scripture, one passage said, you will know what you follow on to know. I had to follow that meal plan to know the results that I was after. What are you seeking? What are you after? Get out of people. I just heard this. Just, I just heard this just quick. Get out of people's business. That's for somebody. I heard that. He said, say it. Get out of people's business. Mind your own business. Whomever you are. Because I've just been interrupted by the Holy Spirit. I'm not interrupted. I'm following him. Mind your own business. That way you won't be frustrated. Eat your own meal plan that God has given you. Stop trying to put it on somebody else because they may. And one thing about my brother, that he did different types of meal plans for the different type of people. He looked at how much you weighed. He looked at your what, what your goal was. He looked at what you needed. See, many times we want to give people things that don't fit them. Remember King Saul wanted David to wear his armor? And David said, this does not fit me. This won't work for me. The meal plan that my brother prepares for people, he, he takes an account, oh, you're diabetic? You've got blood pressure? He looks at your health. Why? Because what you make can take in, I can't take in. Do you understand? That's the same way it is in the spirit. David said, your armor, King Saul, will not work for me. Because I know what I need to kill Goliath. And your armor will weigh me down. We, we, many times we tell people, look, you need to pray like this. Or you need to fast like this. Well, now you got to fast. The, uh, no food, you guys. That's fast. Now, if you don't do it down your fast, if they call it, you do you. But the Bible tells us how to fast, okay? So, I'm saying, look, you got, this is, I, I'm talking about the number of days. And you want to see results? You might, somebody might tell somebody, you know, how I saw results? I fasted five, I fasted for a whole 24 hours, or I fasted for a whole uh, 10 days, no food, and I saw results. Well, they might not be able to do that if they're a beginner. They may not be able to do that. And then you get frustrated because they can't do that. Why don't we just say, look, here's the meal plan. This is Father's meal plan for your life. You have to follow the plan. I'm here. My brother was here. He was my motivator. I'm here to cheer you on. And, and, and when I would say, ooh, Child, I'm so tired of eating this chicken. Uh, he said, no, you got to come on. You got to do it. That's going to be good for you. That's gonna, but the, and, and then, all of a sudden, see, when you first started out, in the, when I first started out in the meal plan, and he was telling me, get, trying to get me to eat, eat six small meals a day, like, when he first said that, like, child, I can't be eating those six meals a day. How that going to happen? But when I followed his plan, all of a sudden, my metabolism increased. I was burning off so many calories. I was just burning, burning, burning. And I call him and I'm like, child, I need some more food, honey. I, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So what he would do, what my brother told me to do, he said, now I'm going to add this thing to you. He said, if you got hungry, <laughs> I said, at night, I get, I'd be so hungry. He said, if you got hungry, eat your uh, a tablespoon of peanut butter. That's it. Tablespoon of peanut butter. Okay, all right, I'll do that. I'll do that. Why? He was showing me, I don't want to interrupt where you are. So you right there where you are. You, I have to motivate you, encourage you, keep doing it. Why? Because your, your metabolism is going to kick in. That spiritual metabolism, what am I doing for you today? I'm motivating you. I'm encouraging you. Why? Because if you maintain, you don't quit, your spiritual metabolism is about to kick in, and you're going to be doing it. You're going to be burning that word of God in your life. You're going to be seeing results, and you're going to be wanting more and more and more of the results. Why? Because I'm not quitting. I recognize the goal, my prize, is eternal life and to receive a crown. 
So to have that metabolism kicking in, which required more intake, more intake, more intake. Woo! That's what he was showing me. Now more intake. When I thought six meals, I'm like, oh, I, I gotta, I'm trying to force myself in the beginning to eat six meals. Now I like, I can't wait till my next meal. I'm hungry. Where's my next meal? Why? Because I'm taking intake more and more. I'm burning. I'm burning. So when we get into the Word of God, that is the same thing. Oh, it's so good. I want more. I want more. I'm burning it off. I'm burning it off. I'm using it. I'm activating it. And more and more, I need it. More and more the enemy, he's, he can't get to me like he used to. Why? Because I am building up my stamina. Now I can see it. Now that word has come alive that says, I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Why? I can see it. Why? Because I built up my stamina. Don't quit. Don't let anybody, anybody cause you to quit. Motivate. Be motivated by the word of God. Somebody said, I, 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 sometimes I just don't understand it. Just keep listening. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you to explain this to me. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Father gave him to us. Jesus asked Father to send another comforter. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth. And he will guide you into all truths. That's word. And he will. You just got to trust him. You've got to depend upon him. Because you need him. This is not the time, Church of Jesus Christ, to quit. Not the time to quit up, on, quit up on anything. Not to quit on your family. Not to quit on your relationships. Hallelujah. This is not the time to quit because do you not know somebody you've encouraged along the way is saying, I needed that. When you thought your words didn't matter. When it's, see, the enemy will try to make you feel like it. nobody's listening, nobody's listening, nobody's listening. And then you get a call and somebody says, you know what? I was listening. I was listening when you said this. I was listening when you said that. And what is that doing? That's your encouragement to know. Whew. <sighs> that was that peanut butter. Ooh, thank you. I needed that peanut butter right there and there. That was your spiritual peanut butter. Now you say, all right, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ. I can, I can, I can. I'm motivated. What is my motivation? My motivation is eternal life with Jesus Christ. So I'm not going to let how the people view me in church bother me. I'm not going to make excuses about I can't go to church anymore because of any wrong thing, wrong excuse, because no excuse is a good excuse, you know, unless you're bedridden, okay, I'm motivated now to say, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm not going to let, just because some lady in the church comes and sees me walking in and she turns her nose up, I want to go out, no, she's not my motivation, she's not my determination, that crown of life, eternal life, is what I'm motivated to get into worship, to get into praise. Because she is not the thing that's going to move me out of my relationship with Jesus. Because none of these things will move me. See, that's the tenacity. That's the attitude of I won't quit. You've got to have. I may not speak or articulate the way I see the pastor or the, or, or the uh, missionaries or evangelists articulate. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do me. Say it the way he's giving it to me. Why? I will not quit. I'm not quitting on God. I'm not quitting on anything that he has said, what I'm going to do for you, I won't give up. And I'm talking to somebody right now. You don't give up on the promise that he said you will see. 
just because you don't see it yet. Don't give up on the promise just because you don't see it yet. Keep following. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Yeah, you're going to cry. I cried. I'm, I'm so tired of crying about my finances. I just heard that for somebody. I'm so tired of being worried about my finances. I just heard that about for somebody. Don't quit. I'm tired of seeing my money. Oh I, oh, I heard that too. I'm tired of seeing my money not being, not having enough. Let me tell you something. You, you can't be a roller coaster when it comes down to your tides. I'm talking to somebody right now. You must be consistent. You know this because it stirs, it, it bothers you. When you're not consistent with all. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. It bothers you to the point where, oh God, I, I get tired of it. I want to be consistent. I want to be. Just do it. Just do it. When you, because you start, you stop. You start, you stop. You start being consistent, and then, oh, it's getting good. It's getting good. And then, this, this is the way Father is showing it to me. You, you can't see my foot, but. I'm kicking my left foot, but then a kick happens. Then he kicks something in your life, and and he kicks that thing in your life, and you can call it a hiccup or whatever, and it makes you make an adjustment. Mm. Don't next time you get a kick, look down and say, "Oh, that ain't nothing. I'm not gonna no. I'm I'm giving this money to Jesus. I'm giving my tithes. Why? Because." The enemy wants to keep you on that roller coaster of not being consistent. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. You know why? Because I heard my Abba just tell me, he said, breakthrough is for you. And that Satan does not want you to have a breakthrough in your finances. He does not. I mean, you go from year, month, day. It's actually on a daily for you. Oh my God. Be consistent. And you know what? I hear Abba telling me, I've told you how to pay your tithes to me. Mm. He told you, I'm going to give you an example, then I'm going to let you go. He told this person how to pay your tithes. He said, pay them every week. Because you have a tendency when you get that money, oh, okay, I'm going to hold it. No, give them, and you look like, you look at yourself, oh, that's too small to be given every week. No, why? Because he's training you to be consistent. Amen? To that person, you be blessed in that area. Now, you guys, I love y'all so much, and I want to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Don't quit. This has really been in my spirit, man. Do not quit. Quit. Don't be so easily moved. Start laughing at the devil's folly, his foolishness, not folly, his craziness. Laughing, I'm not, you're not going to make me quit on this. I'm not going to do it. I will not quit. you got to say that. I'm going to be consistent. You got to say that. Whatever it is, it, it cannot be just an, uh, a spiritual thing. It could be a, 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 a thing relative to your body. I'm going to be consistent. I'm saying it to me myself. I'm speaking this also to me. I'm going to be consistent and, getting, and walking. I got to be consistent. I'm going to maintain. I told myself how many days I want to walk a week. I got to do it. So you tell yourself, what I want to do this I'm, and do it. Be consistent in it. Why? Because if the enemy can get us inconsistent, come on. But you got to say, no, I got to maintain. I got to press in. You may, somebody might be consistent in, in a thing that they love, but what about the thing that you don't like to do, but you know you got to do? Wow. What about that? What about that? The doctor may have said, look, you, you can only eat a piece of cake once a month. Once a month? That's, they may be 
something that he's saying don't do. But you got to be consistent. Why? Because it, it's good for you. Somebody might be told you need to drink more water. Drink, take in more water. And, and that, that may be an issue for you. Whatever I'm saying, no matter what it is, whether it be spiritual or natural, if God is telling you to be consistent in it. Don't quit. Don't give up. And I'm talking to somebody now. Holy Spirit's talking to me again. You need to go walking because it's going to help your back. Mm -hmm. Because you have pressure on your back. And that muscle is so tight, and, and you've been thinking about it. Oh, I might go, I might go this. Oh, no, I, but if you do it, that pressure is going to re be released off your back. Yeah. It's going to be released off your back. It really is. And then you'll feel better. Oh, I'm, a whole lot of things will make you feel better once you be mobile, okay? I, I'm a testament to that. I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm just encouraging you not to quit. That's all I'm going to do. I, I want to encourage you, just don't give up. We got too many, I, do not throw that towel in. Put that towel down. Don't throw it in, put it down. It's not designed for you. You have a new meal plan, remember? The meal plan, you're going to keep eating, you keep eating, keep eating, and you're going to see God do his greatest work. Keep eating. Let me pray for you. You guys, I'm telling you, this is in my spirit, man, about this quitting. Because I've been feeling this. Don't quit. I cannot stress it enough. This is in my spirit. This is not the time to quit because of what is about to come down. Father has great things for us. And we've got to be ready for that. Great blessings are coming our way. Why do you think the enemy wants you to throw in the towel? Because he does not want that blessing that Father is ready to release in your life. But Father says, I'm, I'm, I want to see consistently. I want to see it. Be consistent. Be consistent. No, it's not about being a religious thing. No, it's about Father, what he wants to see from you. It's not a robotic thing. It's about what he wants to see from you because he knows where you are. He knows the enemy loves to rob you when it comes down to your consistency. He knows the enemy knows how to get next to you. Would somebody just say something? You know, somebody, come on, talk to me, Holy Spirit. I was about to get out. But I heard, the, I heard Father say, you have a problem with people with smart mouths. Somebody I'm talking to, you don't like the person with the smart mouth, so that irritates you. The enemy knows it, and, and God's been dealing with you about it. Don't bother, ignore it, don't worry about it. Just, you know, do be nice, be kind, be sweet. But you ready to check him every time. You got a problem. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, come on. Whew. Consistency. Let's be obedient in everything he's telling us to do. Because it's going to work for our good. We're going to see some blessings. Ooh, come on, Jesus. They're going to come down mightily, you guys. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these, your people. Thank you for us. Father, forgive us for our inconsistency. Forgive us for not, forgive us for thinking about wanting to throw in the towel and quit and not, not maintain and not maintain and eat this meal plan that you've given us, eating the word of God and, and sticking to what you told us to do. Let us always remember that you are for us. The promise that you've given us is yes and amen. And we're going to stick to what you've ordained for our lives and not give up. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. We're too busy looking at others sometimes, Father, that we forget to keep our eyes on you. Forgive us. You're for us. You are truly for us. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, give your people strength. Give them peace. Let the love of God just consume them and let them rest in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, do me a favor now, you guys. Thank you, first of all, for all your love, your support, 
you're tagging, you're sharing, you're tweeting, letting people know about this ministry. I appreciate it. Don't forget to tell them about JLP Ministry TV. It's now on YouTube. Let's have people bombard that uh, website, that platform. Have them sharing. Have, tell them to share, subscribe. Just tell your friends. Spread it out so people can be blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't forget to join me on Friday for Prayer and Prophetic. It's been amazing. God has been doing some mighty things, you guys. So don't forget to join me for Prayer and Prophetic. I appreciate you. I will be ministering at a place of worship church Sunday. Join me. 1045, be my guest at a place of worship church, 1704 Northampton Road, Suite 208 in DeSoto, Texas. Hallelujah. 845 Prayer Friday. Don't forget it. Now, do me another favor right quick. Go. I want you to be a part of an awesome time in the word of the Lord by also in an awesome book to read too. Get the Authentic Woman. Get the Authentic Woman. You can find on my website, the book, The Authentic Woman, just go there, J-L-P-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot org, and you'll find where you can get this book. Don't forget to join Evangelist Catrice Roberts, hallelujah, at, on uh, Clubhouse. You can find that link also on my website. You'll be glad you did, you guys. You'll be glad you did because God is doing some great things. And all you got to do is just trust him, believe in him, rely on him. And I thank you. I really do appreciate you. And look, we'll be talking more about other things. And God has been stirring something in my spirit. I'm just waiting to see what the stir is. But just know that I love you. Father loves you. And great things are happening. I'll be with you Friday. Make sure you let somebody know so that they can be in on Prayer and Prophetic Friday. Amen. Be blessed. Bye-bye, you guys.